Remember the days of searching for information by typing into a search bar, clicking on links and scrolling for a few seconds? Those are gone. Now, all we have to do is ask a robot and get the answers we want right away. Hey Siri, would you date ChatGPT? Even with follow-up questions. Soon, we'll even be able to choose which robot to ask until there's only one. Search is dead and this is what's next. Google announced its own chatbot to kill ChatGPT, <clears throat> compete with ChatGPT. And after watching this video, you'll know more than 99% of people about what's going on. In this video, we'll dive into what's happening, the ChatGPT craze, why it happened, and what it means for you. Stick around for my own opinion and leave yours in the comments. I'd love to argue with you. <clears throat> Hear your thoughts below. I'm Delia, I'm an ex-Google engineer, and here we talk about tech and travel, so consider subscribing for more tech content and use that like button. Google engineers worked really hard on it, and in case Google's AI takes over the world, you'll be safe, so do it. Unless you've been living under multiple rocks, you already know about ChatGPT, and I don't want to bore you with news clips or celebrity impersonation. ChatGPT. A new artificial intelligence tool is going viral. ChatGPT. Or show you how it helped me automate my Instagram or get 400 Tinder dates. Wait, that's next week's video. ChatGPT passed the US medical exam, law exams, and even Google software engineer interviews. So it could literally work at Google. But Google's already working on ChatGPT. Well, actually what they're working on is called BARD, Google's latest search AI powered sidekick. They're also investing $300 million in an open AI challenger called Claude that will take on ChatGPT, but with AI safety. It already raised a billion dollars. So there's a lot of bots in this race, but let's talk about BARD for now. Sundar, Google's CEO, wrote a blog post about it just a few days ago, and this is everything you need to know about BARD. It's a new AI tool that initially will be released with a lightweight model version of Lambda, allowing for more user feedback and improvement, just like ChatGPT did. They let it loose on the internet and users will interact with it, and that is how they improve it. And yes, that's the same Lambda which a former Google employee claimed to be sentient and got fired for it, but more on that later. Apparently, BARD meets a high bar for quality and safety and the smaller model requires less computing power which makes it more scalable for more users and it's been considered experimental. A pretty dangerous label if you ask me. Experimental is the stage before beta in the development of a product or technology, so it's when it's still being developed and tested and is not yet ready for widespread use. Yet apparently it's being released in a few weeks. Sorry, let me try to be a little more unbiased, at least until we get to the end and I give you my own opinion. But BARD has been trained on a diverse set of topics and data sources, and it's been designed to provide fresh, high quality responses and up-to-date information, unlike ChatGPT, which doesn't really know what's going on after 2021. Also, it's not just a chatbot, but a tool that can be used in various apps. So of course, they will also open source their APIs so developers can build with it. Okay, but how did all this happen? Why did Google let this happen? How did they wait so long to compete with ChatGPT? Well, they issued a code red after all the hype around ChatGPT, and now Google is finally fighting back because over 60% of Google's revenue comes from search. So it was a bit of an existential threat to Google's business. I mean, you know you've made it when your brand name becomes a verb or a noun, kind of like Kleenex for tissues or Adidas for shoes. Google it literally is the verb for searching something. But what happens when the search is over and when literally people don't use search anymore? Because with the pace of AI development doubling every six months, it's only a matter of time before other alternatives like AI assistants become so good that they gain mass adoption and search slowly dies. The days of searching through countless links to get the information we wanted will one day be a thing of the past. We can already just ask a chatbot and boom, we know everything. So naturally, Google needs to get on the chatbot bandwagon as well and as soon as possible. But here's the crazy thing. Google has been at the forefront of AI since 2016. They're working on over 20 AI projects and always been super forward thinking, but maybe not so much with everything happening recently and maybe not always since they are the reason the chat GPD craze began. Google was working as an AI first company since 2016 and one of the fastest moving and biggest AI companies in the world. But in 2017, they shot themselves in the foot or rather in the brain because it was Google Brain that did the damage. Researchers from Google Brain released a paper called Attention is All You Need, all about a new type of neural network architecture called the Transformer, which revolutionized the field of natural language processing of NLP. Sound familiar? That is the basis of how ChatGPT works, generative pre-trained transformer. So it would be pretty ironic if ChatGPT became the death of Google, especially since Google moved slowly due to safety concerns. It would be like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, where the creature that Victor Frankenstein creates turns on him and ultimately kills him. Or many of the cautionary tales warning against the dangers of unchecked scientific ambition and the consequences of playing God. But wait, 
aren't there so many cautionary tales of AI as well? And that exact storyline happening, but with humans developing AI and it turning on them? There are. And Google was the one who was concerned about safety and is now going full steam ahead towards what might one day become AGI. Sundar said, I am confident about the huge opportunity in front of us, thanks to the strength of our mission, the value of our products and services in early investments in AI, to fully capture it, we will have to make some tough choices. I wonder what those tough choices might be. Would it be potentially unleashing a Pandora's box of destruction and chaos if we don't properly regulate the development of AI and could lead to devastating catastrophic consequences for humanity? The very fabric of society could be torn apart if these systems were to malfunction or the AI could be hacked or programmed with malicious intent. Perhaps the unchecked development of AI poses a threat to the survival of humanity and the whole planet. And Google did try to take a cautious approach and implement super strict measures to ensure the safe and responsible use of AI before it's too late. But now they're running fully towards it. I actually saw someone post a Rollo May quote, it is an ironic habit of human beings to run faster when we have lost our way. And we are sprinting like Usain Bolt with a jetpack towards AI. But why? because Google is obviously not gonna roll over and die while OpenAI or Microsoft or whoever takes their entire search market. Billions of people across the globe use Google's search engine while ChatGPT just crossed 1 million users back in December. But it is very clear for Google that there is a need to move towards this. And with ChatGPT4 coming, Google doesn't have too long before they really need to take action and catch up, regardless of how cautious they want to or tried to be. Actually, Bing has already integrated ChatGPT4, the newest model, into Bing, which is a little embarrassing for Google to be so far behind. Jeff Dean, the head of Google's AI division, actually told employees and emphasized that the company has much more reputational risk and is moving more conservatively towards AI than a startup. And he said, it's super important that we get this right. You can imagine for search-like applications, the factuality issues that are really important and the bias and toxicity and safety issues that are paramount. Dean also said that the technology isn't where it needs to be for a broad rollout and that currently publicly available models have a lot of issues. For example, AI can just make stuff up. If they're not really sure about something, they're just gonna tell you anyway. You know, elephants are the animals that lay the largest eggs or whatever. This is absolutely true because when I asked ChatGPT who created Bard, it kept convincing me OpenAI did. Did I miss something? Let me know in the comments, but I thought it would be funny to ask ChatGPT if it thinks that Bard is gonna compete with it. This is all a little bit frightening. But ironically, OpenAI, who has created ChatGPT, was created by one of the biggest preachers of AI safety, our Lord and Savior, Elon Musk, who has warned of a Terminator-like AI apocalypse for almost 10 years now. Musk's track record of caution against AI robots is longer than anyone else's, and his concerns about its potential negative impact on society seem to have slowed down in the recent years. It, it's less of a worry than it used to be, uh, mostly due to taking more of a fatalistic attitude. So you used to have more hope. I remember in 2014, he recommended to read Superintelligence by Nick Bostrom, which is a philosophical exploration of the potential future development of AI. It is a little bit dense and heavy, but I also highly recommend this book. But the main message of Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, and Strategies, is that we are at an extremely important fork in the road where the butterfly effect of our smallest actions could be potentially catastrophic. Not to scare you or anything. But in the book, Bostrom explores the different paths that all of this could take, including the development of friendly AI that benefits humanity, the rise of malevolent AI that is hostile to humans, and also the possibility of a digital gray goose scenario where self-replicating AI systems consume all matter or the entire world becomes paperclips. You have to read the book to get it, sorry. But he also makes the same argument as Elon Musk that as AI becomes more advanced, it could eventually surpass human intelligence, leading to a scenario where AI has greater control over the world than humans and could potentially pose a threat to humanity. And it also offers potential solutions for managing the risks associated with advanced AI. So the main message is that we have to act now to ensure that advanced AI develops in a way that benefits humanity rather than leading to our eventual downfall. Because seriously, the rapid advancement of AI could lead to the development of systems that are beyond human control and can really cause harm, especially if it's used for malicious purposes and the consequences could be catastrophic if AI systems were to malfunction or be programmed with with malicious intent. And the scary part is, 
that I think he's right. We do need to act now. And the fact that we're in an AI war or a race to see who's gonna get there faster is really scary. So we have to make sure that we're developing AI safely now before it's too late. There are two pigeons making love outside the balcony. Are they making love? I don't know what they're doing. Okay, anyway. Some of the key recommendations on how to do this include conducting research to understand the potential risks posed by super intelligent AI and mitigate those risks, developing ethical principles for AI development, establishing government structures for AI development, like regulatory bodies, rules, we need lawyers on this ASAP, seriously, and making sure that AI is developed in a responsible and ethical manner. Also encouraging international cooperation so that we make sure that AI is developed in a way that is globally beneficial, as well as investing in AI safety research to ensure the potential risks posed by advanced AI are understood and addressed, and ensuring that AI systems are designed with built-in safety measures and fail-safes to prevent any harmful outcomes. Also promoting transparency and openness in AI development so that the public is informed about the potential risks and benefits of AI. When I worked at Google, I tried so hard to get into the AI buildings, but a lot of them are off access even to Google employees. So that is kind of scary. We don't really know what's going on inside closed stores. That is something I wanna talk about a lot more on this channel here, how we're gonna create safe AI. So I think after reading this book and after a few years of warning the public, Elon realized that if you can't beat him, may as well join him and be the one who makes the AI. And I think Google now had that same realization. They either die off or they also try to join the AI race. What is my prediction? We are going through another huge digital renaissance, just like the invention of the printing press in the 15th century revolutionized the way information and knowledge was spread and made information more widely available, impacting education, politics, culture, leading to the scientific revolution and the renaissance. This change will have the same effect, but at a much greater speed. We'll talk more about Moore's law and what's coming and how fast in another video. But point is, we're gonna look at Google search the same way that we look at horses as a way of transportation. Sure, some people will still use it, but cars are a lot faster, more widespread and more efficient. Google search, Bing, Yahoo, <laughs> they're all gonna be a thing of the past and we're all gonna move towards AI assistant type chatbots for information. Now, the only question is who's gonna lead this AI revolution? Will it be Google or someone else? Google does have the most data out of any company ever. And so it's gonna have way more up-to-date information than ChatGPT, but only time will tell. Let me know your thoughts below, subscribe for more tech content. And it would mean a lot to me if you liked the video for the algorithm so I can keep making more videos because all this stuff is super interesting. So. I hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next one.